So I do think we've set up a pattern by now. We start with me in front of my many computers giving you an awkward introduction to what we're going to do on today's show. And it's worked pretty well for us so far. But there's probably a question running through your mind. Zero, you say. You keep picking on the stupid NES. Why don't you do something else? Well, we here at GameHack are nothing if not opportunistic, so today, simply because I bought one at a flea market for $20, we're going to pick on a slim PlayStation 2. I spied with my little eye this PlayStation 2 at a flea market for $20. Naturally, at the price point of $20, I asked the proprietor of the shop what was wrong with it, and they said that the power socket was, quote, a little finicky. You have to play with it to get it to work, and it's not playable the way it is. Maybe you could use it for parts or something. So, of course, I immediately checked it out, and upon seeing that the power socket is indeed a little bit finicky, depending on the position of the plug, we illustrious game hack staffers exchanged sidelong glances to each other, and $20 changed hands in a big fat hurry. Something like this is a problem that's endemic to a lot of consoles, and it's really child's play to fix. So today we're going to show you how. Your first task, of course, is to open the machine. And luckily, the slim PlayStation 2 is a lot easier to work on than the original fat model. The first step is to remove these plastic uh, screw covers here which can be done with a small screwdriver, or I prefer to use a pocket knife. Just don't stab yourself. The two front feet here are just rubber feet that are adhered to the casing. There's no screws under those, so don't bother peeling them off. Beneath the six screw covers are six Phillips head screws of no particular merit. They can be removed with a number one, or preferably a number two Phillips head screwdriver. After all six screws have been removed, Proceed to the rear of your unit, where you will see your official Sony warranty sticker, which we shall now void. You're going to want to start at the side that doesn't have the stair step on it. Get your fingernail inside and gently separate it. You can see there it came right apart. The stair step side of the console is a little bit more difficult. You may be tempted just to open the thing up like a book, but don't, because you can break it. Instead, notice that there's a seam here. And if you can get your fingernail in there and pry out, the casing is somewhat clipped together. With a little bit of finagling, it should come apart. And here you can see our slim PlayStation 2 system board. The top casing has absolutely no electronics in it and is not interesting to us at all. The PlayStation 2 internals are a little bit fragile and you'll see they're actually composed of multiple boards all sandwiched together. The entire board assembly comes out as one unit, but you'll notice it doesn't want to just lift out. There's a little bit of a trick to it. There are a few safe places where you can grab the board. One is here, this loop of metal that sits underneath the CD mechanism. You can also put your finger here under the shielding to lift up this side of the board. But the far side won't want to lift up. There are some clips along this side of the board that you'll have to pry up with a small flathead screwdriver. Next to the yellow power jack here, there's a grounding loop on this piece of shielding. The primary clip that will hang you up is right here. You don't want to pull on these because you can pull them off of the board, especially the uh, AV connectors. The correct place to pry is right there. When lifting the far side of the board up, pry up slightly right here and the whole thing should come free. I'll flip this over so we can look at the back. The top of the board, or the front of the board, is now facing this way. These are the bottoms of the controller ports and the USB ports here. Our power connector is down on the lower left corner here. And here we can see the crux of our problem. Even from this distance, it's clear to see that the third solder connection, one in the center right there, has a crack running through it. And this has actually been pulled away from the board. The next step is to get out your soldering iron. <coughs> your flux and solder, and freshen up these three solder joints to complete the connection. Slim PlayStation 2 is luckily one of the few consoles that you can fire up without a casing attached to it at all. So I'll test it presently 
Our power light is on the uh, small breakaway board with the power switch. And no matter how I manhandle this plug, you can see that the light remains lit and the unit keeps receiving power. And I um, seem to have gotten the lid of my flux tube attached to my arm. Reassembly is many times easier than disassembly. Everything should snap together nicely, and since all the clips are designed for assembly and not disassembly, everything should just click. Metroid, Mario, Zelda, more Zelda. There we are. Yeah, we're gonna whoop some ass. We're not fucking around with this. This is the smoke test. Red light, green light. Go. And through the magic of jump cutting, I'm suddenly wearing a different shirt. Wait, what the hell? Alright, so I know this has been another boring taking stuff apart and soldering it episode, but I think it's a pretty important thing, because power supply problems are probably the most common thing you'll ever find with old consoles, or even new ones. The only thing second to power socket or power supply problems in repairing consoles is probably cleaning issues, so I think this is important stuff to know. Power socket problems can come about from a lot of things, but the primary one is abuse and you'll find it a lot with old consoles, especially ones that you buy used, that were abused by kids or frat boys or whoever the hell owned them before. If you've got some classic consoles lying around, broken or otherwise, you can do everybody a favor and try not to abuse them. If you find that you really have to abuse something, why not uh, abuse some Greek mythology instead? Eh? <laughs>